everybody. Um, the screen shows Dr. Derek Ward has been the, the, he's the originator of these slides. I'm just talking to them. He's our admissions tutor. So um, as, you, as we talk through, you may have some quite specific questions, uh, which I may not be able to give a clear, concise answer to, uh, but would refer you to Derek Ward and, and the rest of the admissions team for you know, your personal circumstances. First, a little bit about my role. As Louise said, I have got a, a rather odd job title, Education Development Specialist. I come from an educational rather than a clinical background, and there are several roles within the med school um, who are similar to that. My main role is what I call providing broad curriculum support, uh, mainly to the community-based medicine, our GP team, so supporting the GPs as teachers. That could be teacher training, assessment materials, teaching materials, etc. But I also get involved in several other things across the MBCHP, such as quality assurance, etc. I've been there about 20 years, so uh, hopefully I've got enough knowledge, background, context. Uh, but as with most things in life, things change very quickly. So some of the things we'll be addressing, uh, to, I'll be talking about today, some of them uh, are changing as we speak, and others are how things might change in the future, uh, particularly with the impacts of the new national uh, medical licensing assessment where all universities will set the same a national exam for their medical students and things like you may have heard um, the political aims of uh, expanding student numbers etc uh, so they things are changing uh, but most of the things basically we're still here to train future doctors and so a lot of that remains the same okay I was sent through these these questions which you've put together for me. Some are quite very specific, so I may have to refer you to someone else to get the answer to that. Uh, but others, I think most of them I cover as part of uh, of this talk. But just before we start, I'll, I'll just address that first one. If my predicted grades are A star, double A, and then if at the end of year 13 I get A star, A star, B with a B in physics, will I still get accepted? Um, I don't know. The, um, it would very much depend on what's happening at the time. We generally uh, make around 800 offers and then about 400 students uh, take up their places. Uh, the reason for the difference is that often students will have offers from uh, other medical schools and may decide to go to Manchester for some reason or Newcastle. Um, it would very much depend on uh, how many students make the conditional offer um, and how and how many are falling short or have so may have the same occurs point, but there's some um, something that's happened in their their exams which doesn't reflect the exact terms of the conditions. Basically, aside from that, I would say, does it really matter? Is that something you should be thinking about now? Basically, now you should be thinking about doing as best as you can in all subjects, not the what's ifs, what's nots. That that will just distract you. Concentrate on what you're doing. What you're in control of and how how best you prepare yourself for for for, uh, for the future okay as say uh, most of those questions I, I i hope to address uh, but we'll return to them and to make sure we mop up any other questions or any other detail uh, that um that may be necessary okay um Generally, this talk is about applying to medicine in general, but obviously for, I'm from Birmingham, I'm the, well, originally from Leeds, but I'm from the University of Birmingham. Um, and so I'd like to tell you a little about what I think is good about Birmingham Medical School. One thing to note is we are a big medical school. We have approximately 400 students in each year. Um, and that is increasing as well, or has increased um, in our current fourth year, we have about 450, uh, similar for third year. Um, the, and as I said, with political aspirations of increasing the number of, of uh, training places, that may well increase. Probably not at the time you're applying, but I think it is worth noting we are a big, big medical school. Uh, others are a lot smaller, I believe, such as Keele is around 120, 150 students, uh, but others would be comparable to somewhere like Manchester or some of the London, London uh, courses. Um, does that make a difference? Um, I think in terms of your student experience, I think it's something to consider. Um, 
the advantages are there's a huge, you know, uh, well-established medical societies, various sports teams, etc. Uh, very vibrant, lots of people to meet, lots of people to interact with. Uh, on the other hand, um, you may feel that it's a bit anonymous. Uh, your lecturers, your tutors may not know you as individuals. Uh, but as a rider on that, we are aware of that and do want to develop a personal experience for each student. So we have things like the personal academic tutors. Uh, once you get into the hospitals, we've got the senior academy tutors who are looking after um, allocated groups of six to ten students and are supporting them individually. So don't feel that you'll get lost in the medical school. There are structures there, uh, but it's something you might want to consider depending on your your own personal preferences. Although we're big, we have good levels of student satisfaction. Um, and another advantage is the broad specialty and research experience where right next to the QE, which is um, uh, uh, many of our, our lecturers come from there, our tutors come from there, who are also involved in research, uh, highly um, you know, internationally rated, uh, cutting edge research. Um, I'm not sure whether this is still quite as much, but a few years ago, we, Birmingham had a re reputation of not teaching anatomy. That was never true. It was just that we don't dissect, although some medical schools do. Uh, and our anatomy, fine, uh, anatomy teaching is fine. It stands stands against any other medical school from, uh, from my knowledge. Much about student support, uh, the idea of the personal academic tutors, senior academic tutors. Uh, we also have a large student services uh, departments who are there to help help you individually, uh, help yourself navigate yourself through the course, what the requirements, but also any personal uh, things which might be affecting you at the time, such as finance, etc., to help you uh, make sure you're on course to uh, concentrate as much on your learning as possible. Another advantage, I think, is the diversity of population in the West Midlands. Um, so your medical experience, you may be in Worcester uh, dealing with urban and rural medical type problems or in uh, areas of high deprivation where the medical um, some support is, is quite different. The needs for medical support is quite different. So I think that is a strength. You get a wide diversity of experience by, by dint of us being in a major conurbation. Uh, our industries, trusts and general practices have been teaching with us for many years, so they're very experienced, know exactly what you need as, as Birmingham students. And it's a great campus. I've worked on five or six different university campuses uh, in my working life, and I think Birmingham has got to be the most attractive. We, and recent changes, you'll see a lot of investment um, in new buildings, you know, teaching, dedicated teaching and learning buildings, a new library. Uh, opening up of the green space in front of the clock. If you haven't been there, I do, I do encourage you to go have a look, just if it's a weekend walk around, just to get a feel of the place. It is a very um, attractive campus, and um, I, I think it speaks for itself. It looks, look, you know, look, looks the part for when you're there. Uh, I said earlier, we have a, a very vibrant med, med, med soc, medical society of students who get involved not only in the social activities of sports, et cetera, but also we have various um, undergraduate um, specialty um, associations. So we have a GP society, so for those students who are interested in general practice or surgery, et cetera. So a chance to meet like-minded people and events tailored to those interests. So what are our graduates like? Um, I think this will be a theme as we talk about UCAT and application process, putting your um, personal statements together, is like, what do we want you to look like as graduates? What are our doctors like? I think one of the things is practical, but can apply their knowledge, patient-centered, compassionate, holistic, all things there. We, we want to develop you as future doctors. One of the things um, that I think students uh, that you, you need to think about is, uh, as I say, when I go through the application process and what we're looking for, uh, one of the things we're looking for is, well, your A-levels, your, your uh, academic qualifications, which tells us so much about your ability to sort of uh, apply knowledge, have the knowledge there. But generally, it's the general question is, are you cut out to be a doctor? 
Yeah, a doctor is not just a, a scientist, a, 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 font, a font of knowledge about these things, but it's someone who deals with people. Are you cut out for dealing with people? The stresses, the joys and the downs of um, uh, helping patients, people through their their health, uh, health problems. Um, that's a very personal thing. Um, it's just generally, if you're applying to medicine, be very aware that it's not just a scientific career. It is very much a people career. Um, so all those things, such as good team players, uh, being organised, etc., enthusiastic, honesty, the ethical side of it, developing your professional identity, that professionalism is uh, a strong uh, theme through throughout the course. Um, I'm not trying to put you off. I'm just generally say, genuinely saying, does that appeal to you? Just dealing with people and apply and helping them through their their medical uh, problems. Um, are you cut out for that? As I mentioned earlier, there's um, a new um, national licensing assessment coming in, uh, which is set by the GMC. So all uh, medical students will set the same written final exam, so the MCQ paper, the knowledge based paper that will be uh, uh, managed by the GMC. Uh, and the other half will is a uh, sort of live consultation, simulated consultations, which are set by the universities, but approved by the GMC. Um, this isn't a massive change because for the last as many years as I can remember, we've always all been all university working towards the general learning outcomes of the GMC, uh, as described in the uh, various tomorrow's doctors documents and the core themes are professional values and behaviours. So I was talking about those other things of working as a doctor, the professional skills you need uh, and the professional knowledge. So there are three themes that um, you should be aware of as you are going through your medical career and which are then assessed under the uh, the MLA at the end of, of, of final year. More details for that can be found at GMC with their outcomes of graduates promoting excellence uh, documents. Uh, so please have a look at those and that will give you a much better uh, sense of the breadth and uh, depth in which you'll be uh, going in terms of what we want you to learn and how you want to develop as doctors. OK, um, I'll just take you through our Birmingham current curriculum. Um, most medical schools uh, are five years uh, for undergraduate courses. You will find some um, postgraduate courses, which are fourth year, so what we call graduate entry courses. But I think for most of you in your position, we're looking at this, the standard uh, model. Of five years uh, in yellow there at the, the bottom years one and two uh, is very much about establishing the framework, the base knowledge, the basic considerations and that mostly takes place uh, on campus in the med school, um, whereas from years three, four and five, the learning is very much in the hospital setting, uh, a, a mix of those still teaching sessions, so that may be in simulation or uh, in uh, on ward rounds, seeing doctors in action, etc. So you might see the years one and two is the more academic approach, a traditional academic approach to, to learning a subject, and then years three, four and five, very much applying that knowledge in, in context. I'll give you a bit more detail on that. So the teaching in years one and two is um, not as similar to other undergraduate courses. I'll say it's campus based, a mixture of uh, whole group lectures. So the picture there is of our uh, Leonard Deacon uh, Theatre. I was uh, about to say our new Leonard Deacon Theatre, but it's been there about 18 years. It still looks fairly new, um, uh, but it's very much um, the centre of the medical school in terms of the lectures. Uh, these are supported by small group tutorials where you're divided into groups of approximately 15 students and you stay with that group for all your small group teaching years one and two. So uh, you'll have different teachers come in to tell you about uh, their specialties, be it respiratory or um, endocrinology, etc. But you'll learn as a group of 15. So you get to know those other students in your group uh, very well and you have a natural support group uh, there. Um, private study. 
it's not all, all the learning can't be covered in just the group in the lectures or the tutorials. There is uh, a great onus on students to do their own independent study, make sure they uh, do the background reading, prepare for lectures, etc. It's an intense course and you shouldn't um, underestimate um, the, the role of private study in helping you yourself investigate questions which may have come from a small group tutorial or lecture which you, you want to ensure you get the base knowledge for, but also that background the base context you need to set in order to understand the lecture of the small group teaching better. There is one element in years one and two where you're actually out in a, um, a clinical environment, and that's what we call community-based medicine, which is basically where you go as groups of about six students every fortnight to a general practice surgery, um, where we buy out the time of a, a GP for the whole day, and they are tutor for the day. The general structure of that would be in the morning, arrive around nine o'clock, have about 15, 20 minutes um, introduction with your tutor about how the day will run, maybe covering back, going back to what happened the previous day. Um, any question you have from that, then sit in on um, with uh, GPs consulting, GPs are advanced nurse practitioners or various other members of the national uh, the healthcare team who will be seeing patients. So when you're sitting in, you'll have a task to say, uh, make notes of the questions asked, um, make notes of how the patient described their concern, their presented complaints, etc. So you'll have a task to, to do when you're when you're observing so that you can begin to understand how consultations are structured. And how patients present and describe their their conditions. Uh, the community based medicine runs in that format throughout the first four, four years. So roughly once a fortnight, you'll be out in that setting. Um, and by third and fourth year, you'll be actually doing your own student surgeries under close supervision from the from the doctor. But you'll be putting those skills that you've been observing into practice and developing yourself. Final year community medicine and medicine is still there, but it will be in a four week block rather than stranded through the year. That's years one and two. I'll give you a bit more detail on the content there. So as you see there, the two semesters uh, with exams in January and at the end for each half. So there are um, doing five modules at any particular time, five to six or seven, as you say, I'll come to the ones at the bottom there. Uh, the ones in blue uh, or lilac or whatever colour it is, uh, molecules to medicine, digestive system, etc., are what you might call the, the hard science. Um, of, of medicine, uh, introduction to respiratory medicine, etc. The, those signs, but also uh, we do have uh, modules um, there in in the rose colour people, patients and populations, doctors, patient society, which is looking at a more social science approach to the broader things which um, you should be aware of uh, as a doctor. So things like public health concerns. Um, professionalism in terms of uh, ethical obligations, uh, how to communicate within within uh, a medical team, um, how the whole NHS system hangs together and things you need to be aware of as a doctor, in addition to the, the hard science, if you like. Also, see, the, see their community-based medicine, uh, which I've just described, uh, regional anatomy, you have sessions uh, with anatomy through, with um, uh, anatomy demonstrators teaching you uh, anatomy. Uh, their professional academic skills is a hodgepodge of uh, learning skills, um, how to write an academic essay, uh, how to reference, etc. Those sort of things which you need uh, as background for all, which can be applied in, in other modules. Year two, very similar structure. The topics change, but the, the principles are as I just described with community based medicine, professional academic skills, regional anatomy still um, stranding through through that second year. The big change um, is when you go into the clinical environment, years three, four and five, where you're getting teaching from the medical team, so the doctors and junior doctors, et cetera, there, but also from the multi-professional team. Uh, specialist nurses, uh, operating theatre uh, uh, personnel. So it's not just you. You'll see how the whole medical team work together in uh, in uh, supporting and and helping patients. 
We also have, each trust will also have several what we call clinical teaching fellows. These are early career doctors, so those that have done their postgraduate training, but um, maybe are looking for an opportunity in a specialty, et cetera, or they, they have a strong interest in, in education, and they are dedicated to you as tutors, uh, as students, sorry. So they are uh, based in each hospital. You'll get to know them very well. They'll be the ones uh, delivering teaching, some teaching sessions to you, but also guiding you through how to make the most of the clinical environment, uh, which wards to go on, where the interesting patients are, where it might be busy at any particular time, or where uh, there might be patients to talk to who are waiting for an operation or et cetera. So they'll be able to guide you through where the learning opportunities are in that particular trust. Independent learning continues. Again, that's a theme throughout um, doing your identifying your own learning needs and acting upon those. Um, and as I was just saying, how the clinical teaching uh, fellows can uh, help you in identify and negotiating learning opportunities, either by observation or a bit of supervised uh, practice, and then passing on as you go through the course. So, for example, our final years, they uh, are. In, at some point in the in the year, the first and second student, second year students will have a day in hospital, and final year students are there will be attached to them and give them guidance on how to what to expect in the hospital setting and how to uh, adapt to that learning environment. So very very much an active uh, hands on experience in the hospitals. Um, just a quick word about our structure at Birmingham, and I think you'll find that most. Uh, medical schools do actually um, uh, have their teaching facilities across a wide region. To get th uh, 400, 450 students placed, we do have to look at uh, placements very much in the, the wider West Midlands. So although QE, uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital right next to the university might be seen as like one of our biggest, our biggest hospital, placements can range from New Cross in Wolverhampton, uh, the Alexandra in Redditch, Heartlands, Good Hope, Southern Caulfield, Walsall, Sandwell, but also down to Worcester. And we do have some placements out in Hereford. Uh, about tw I think it's about 20 students in each year, any given time, are uh, placed at, at Hereford, um, where you that's the only place where you get accommodation for your placement there. Um, most placements are within that, that core and Worcester, um, and you'll be going out uh, during your five years you'll go to most of them um the so in year three you might be placed at sandwell for semester one and then go to Walsall manor for semester two so we do make, mix it up so you get a different experience across the board um one thing to consider is that distance the traveling time uh getting places but as i say um we can't we don't have enough places in the QE to have 450, well, across the five, three, four years, 1500 students milling around the hospital at one time. So that's why I have to go much wider afield to ensure that you get quality learning experiences at the places you're going. Um, if you're looking at medical schools, that would be another consideration. I suspect places in the major conurbations such as Manchester, Liverpool, et cetera, will also you know, have quite distant placements for you to get to. There are others such as Peninsula down in Cornwall, um, Hull York uh, up in Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, where the distances are actually quite large. Uh, so Hull uh, places students out in places like Grimsby, uh, Scarborough, and given this sort of the uh, no mo lack of motorway connections there. The travel time can be quite quite long, and they they do tend to have more uh, places where there's accommodation provided on site. Um, that's just a vet general rule of thumb. Uh, but please, if you're interested in particular medical schools and that's an important consideration for you, then uh, please look at the the, the medical schools you're applying to, uh, so you know what to expect. Um, yeah, there we are. Okay, so uh, as to talk about how how it's taught, uh, how medicine is taught in the uh, the hospitals, uh, some of it is out there seeing patients, um, shadowing doctors, junior doctors in their interactions, going into surgery, uh, observing what happens in the in surgery, etc. And as you progress, the opportunity to sort of try out so you know 
try out some of these skills on patients. But that also that's backed up uh, by a lot of simulation teaching. So that would be maybe ward based um, simulation scenarios. Uh, where you might have to react quickly to signs, changes, um, interview the patient uh, to find out what their problems are, etc. Um, also, increasingly, uh, high-tech simulation facilities. Um, just about all of our trusts have an education centre, which um, there are specialised um, facilities for running things in simulation and that may be as just as medical students as a group yourself or you may be joining more interprofessional uh, scenarios or um, doctors of various level of their training joining on the same session so the, the hospitals yeah it's hands-on but it's very much supported by simulation so you're prepared for the next step when you you actually meet and have to deal with patients so year three, the structure of uh, the year three course, uh, we have uh, the main uh, part of that is the integrated medicine surgery, uh, integrated medicine surgery in placement two as well throughout the year, where the main idea is that you're out there on the wards, um, seeing what happens, uh, observing um, doctors and uh, junior doctors, etc., interviewing patients, uh, discussing the cases with patients, uh, getting out, getting practice in your history taking skills, uh, going talking to patients, asking why they're there, saying them, you know, asking the the questions which you. You, you'll need to do as if you were taking a history, um, your clinical examination skills, how to examine the heart, the legs, joints, etc. Uh, very much an opportunity to get the hands on basic skills there. And there are one or two other uh, community based medicine again runs through. Um, there are a couple of other modules uh, which are looking at uh, the sort of the public health or other considerations. I won't go into too much detail there. They're set, set separately. The majority of your learning is in the hospital setting. Exams uh, in years three, four, and five are a, a a whole year. So all the module, all the different subjects talking are done in two exams. Uh, one, one we call the applied knowledge test, which is essentially mul multiple choice questions, and then OSCEs, which may be a, a, an unfamiliar term to you. It means um, ob observed skills in clinical examination. Similar <coughs> uh, clinical examination, excuse me. Basically, these are uh, live exams where you have to take a history from a patient, consult, a, consult do a consultation with a patient, or examine uh, the respiratory system, etc., from a patient in front of an examiner. Um, the um, consultations are simulated, so the patients are actors, uh, role players. Uh, but that's so we've got two aspects there: testing your knowledge base in the MCQs, but then the actual applied practice in the OSCEs. Um, the OSCE, the live exam, the first one you have will be at the end of second year in CBM, uh, which uh, is um, two stations on uh, what Max call communication skills. So that's taking history, gathering information, or and another session on explaining something, uh, how to use an inhaler, for example, for, for asthma. So uh, giving information and gathering information station, and then two stations, one of which might be taking blood pressure, uh, the other might be examining, doing a basic examining of the respiratory system. Um, and then the third, fourth, final years uh, build on that general structure. There are also other um, aspects which are, are required elements. Uh, we have a clinical procedural skills passport. So that's basically a document with a list of, I think it's about 30 different uh, clinical examinations that you must um, have signed off to show that you are reaching the appropriate level for your level of study. Uh, so it will be things like um, you know, examine the respiratory system, joints, etc., uh, that you need to do for that. Uh, so the idea is that you have two or three observed um, as development opportunities, and then once the, your observer decides you've reached the appropriate standard, they will sign 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 you up on that. Um, and then similarly, the observed practice might be seeing you do a full examination of the. Uh, the cardiological examination or respiratory joint examination. 
Um, and helping you navigate through that will be the senior academic tutor. So that would be a hospital based consultant. I think I mentioned with their role before where you'll be then groups of six to ten were attached to a senior academic tutor who you meet with um, once a week or once a fortnight who and he's there to or he or she's there to um, make sure you're finding the correct the, the learning opportunities that you're not um, concentrating all on one area of, of, of your your interests, but you are making sure making sure you have the learning opportunities across the board, which you'll need for the exams. So a, a navigator for your learning, if you like. Year four, uh, we start getting into more of the specialty structure. Uh, so psychiatry is a five week block, surgery and care around surgery. Um, five week block and then specialty medicine where you might go through the various uh, specialties, respiratory, cardiology, endocrinology, etc. of that 10 weeks. Um, and again, the exam format is that half of MCQs, half OSCE. At the end of the year, there's a fi five week uh, placement in uh, selected career experience. So that's where you'll be attached to a team um, in an area which you might be interested in. So, for example, there are some parts of uh, the course, some specialties such as ophthalmology, uh, which only has a few days of the of the whole year, uh, year uh, which might be something of interest, particularly to you, uh, which you might want to look at in more depth. So you have a five week um, block um, attached to the, the, the eye centre uh, or, or other facility around the West Midlands. Um, Community based medicine again running through, and then there are a couple of other um, supporting modules. So I'm the module lead for the teaching project, where basically, uh, part of the GMC outcomes, you're expected to teach the next generation of doctors. So the idea is that you're developing teaching skills through through the course as well. And the format of that is uh, you prepare a lesson to give to your uh, colleagues in your CBM placements or another five or six students. Uh, in an area of interest and relevance to fourth year studies yourself. Uh, the conference poster is more of a research base where you do an audit, a, um, a sort of an examination of clinical records, see how many, how, whether targets have been met, etc. For example, and and you put that together as a poster display, which you then have a, a viva on, questioned about, and have to defend or explain your your project. Um, Moving on. And final year con you know, continues with this um, specialty approach. Um, and this actually is the new structure for uh, taking into account the medical licensing exam, uh, the new exam being brought in by the GMC. So the, well, when you get there, it may, might be quite established, but this structure will apply for the first time next year for us at the university for the final year students. So there's there'll be a, a block in paediatrics, O and G. Um, this has slightly changed since I, the version I last saw, but CBM, the community based medicine general practice will be in there as well. And managing the acutely ill patients. Those will all happen before uh, doing the the um, medical license exam, which is the, the written test, the MCQs, if you like. And then there'll be several activities, um, selected career activities after that and uh, the elective the elective used to be done at the end of fourth year but is now done will will be done in final year uh, the elective is your opportunity to, again to find something of interest um either sort of research wise um, or experience wise uh, where you'll um identify your own project for those four, five weeks and our students go over all over the world to do that they, they maybe spend five weeks in Africa or Australia, America, et cetera. Uh, some are home based, uh, either going back to their hometowns or staying within the Birmingham area and attaching themselves again to an area of interest such as ophthalmology or ear, nose and throat, et cetera. So that's again, something that's student, an, an opportunity for you to uh, see medicine in a different context and explore an area of interest uh, for yourself. And the right of those, this may change. We are going through a major curriculum review at the moment. So how we actually describe it, et cetera, um, 
how the different ad synthesis may come in may, may change slightly. But this gives you a flavour of the kind, the variety of different things that you'll be you'll be doing through your five years. Okay, the one you're mainly interested in, I suppose, is how to apply. Um, I'll take you through the eligibility requirements. Um, these are mainly based at home applicants, uh, school leavers, so people who haven't gone off, done another career or another degree, and then returning to for further study. Take you through the offer we make, um, how we make decisions on interview, and how the kind of things we're looking for uh, in terms of your preparation for for interview. Okay. Um, a levels. Those are uh, this with the. As I think I mentioned earlier we make about 800 offers. Uh, that is whittled down from about 1,200, 1,300 people we actually interview, and that the interview list is whittled down from the three, four, five thousand applications we get. Uh, we have to make decisions on that. Um, and essentially, the one of the main ones is your predicted grades. Uh, so we're looking at predicted grades of three A's. Um, you'll notice they would say contextual widening participation, and there was a question sent to me through by Lee's which talks about access pathways. I assume this is what you're referring to, the, the various widening participation uh, programmes we have, which are aimed at um, encouraging applicants and recruitment from non-traditional areas, schools which don't have a history of sending students to uh, medicine or university, et cetera. So the support for that contextual information coming through from those those routes. Um, in terms of the, the access pathways, there are several. Uh, some are school specific, individual specific. Some are uh, just more contextual. And I hope I, I'm right in saying these. Your, your careers officer will be able to tell you more about those. I'll be aware of the different routes and how different students may which routes may be appropriate for them. Uh, but if you do do want more information about that, I would encourage you to contact our admissions team, Derek Ward, who will be able to uh, describe uh, all the various support and opportunities that are within that. <clears throat> so when we're looking at that, we're looking at predicted grades of three A's broadly, uh, with some adjustment for those from widening past suspicion backgrounds. And our standard offer is uh, A star uh, two A's. Um, this must include biology or human biology and chemistry. I think, on, again, one of the questions asked, uh, do you need maths for um, to get into medicine? Not at Birmingham. You know, the third, your third uh, A-level can be anything. We don't uh, require uh, maths or physics, etc. Those are the two which must be included, biology or human biology and chemistry. The other subject can be anything else. Um, some of you may be taking four, four A levels, etc. This is based on three subjects taken in your final year of secondary school. Um, so, not the, the resets are considered differently. Again, that'd be the sort of context you'd need to contact Derek Ward and the admissions team directly about. Um, I don't know much about the International Bac Baccalaureate, so I'm not sure how many of you are coming from that background, but that's just an outline for those. Uh, those who may apply to. So the general offer, the, the core one is your your A levels, and that's the those are the uh, standard offers we make within that. Also, in your in uh, screening your applications and looking at um, your application, we do consider other things. Um, at the beginning, I mentioned about you know what, that general broad question: Are you cut out to be a doctor? Your A levels, your knowledge of chemistry, biology, physics, etc., tell us one thing: your ability to to uh, learn academically, absorb knowledge, understand uh, the concepts within those subjects. <coughs> but we're also looking for those other things: of Are you cut out to be a doctor? So the UCAT. It's the University Clinical Aptitude Test, uh, which again, you can find online or your careers officer uh, at, uh, at the college can help you with, uh, with that. They, this is required by most universities now. Um, certainly at Birmingham, we require that you do that. Uh, and it's looking at things like verbal reasoning, um, 
personal qualities, etc. Things which may not come out from your, just the what your A level results are telling telling us. <clears throat> uh, we also consider in terms of whether we make an offer your GCSEs, so your top seven subjects scored at forty five percent. Uh, your UCAT score in, is a proportion of 40. These are not pass marks. These are the ratio in which we consider um, consider the, the importance of each element. Uh, contextual factors would be things like we're coming out, things like your uh, the wider participation aspects or things we see from your personal statement, etc. Sorry, it was the, the sort of things you, you were looking for in terms of how, how prepared you are to be a doctor. We don't score your personal statement, but in terms of how you're structuring it, we're looking for an evidence of a commitment to medicine, evidence of involvement in society. So what could that be? Um, a commitment to medicine may be showing your how what you've done, show your interest in medicine. So that could be in any research areas you've done or things you've looked into personally. Um, Evidence involvement in society it could be voluntary roles, etc. Uh, most of these are things like most students do things like volunteer at a care home um, or uh, support charity work, etc. Um, other team activities, sports may come into that or the voluntary things, things which show that you're, um, you're, you're, you're interested in people. Yeah. Um, What's important in your personal statement there is um, being clear on what exactly those roles have involved. Um, when I read through personal statements, uh, I see a lot of sort of very vague references. I volunteered at a care home. Uh, I met several interesting people and got to understand their background stories. What I would like to see is that commitment, the uh, et cetera. So actually quantify. I have been volunteering every Saturday morning for the last two years at this place. Uh, my role has been to uh, make the cups of tea, but ensure that um, you know um, residents uh, have a. I have a chat with residents. I I get involved. I observe if they are having difficulties or feeling upset, et cetera, or tired. So that's really quantifying how long you've been doing that and what exactly that commitment involved. Uh, often I get the feeling when I read something that they went for one or two weeks and thought that'll do. It's not about you learning from that experience, but actually gaining from that experience in terms of how you deal with people, how you understand people from different generations, different backgrounds, uh, different modes of communication, et cetera. So I think very much there of quantifying that. That's what stands out to me is where I don't have to unpick and read between the lines of exactly what did that involve. Just a clear statement of uh, what you did, how long you did it for, uh, what it involved. And then you can add something, a particularly memorable experience or I, this, this is the thing that I take away, which um, shows that I am now aware of how difficult it is to communicate with people with dementia, for example. Uh, we also consider the reference, which is again they used to identify aptitude or any concerns, things like support you may need when you're at university, or any extenuating circumstances which would need to uh, which would need to take into consideration. Okay, so in terms of if you're invited to interview, we uh, have what we call a mini. Uh, multiple interview format, which is approximately, I think it's uh, seven, seven what we call stations, uh, five, seven mini interviews, each one designed to look at uh, aspects such as what you see there on the screen, the qualities we're looking for in terms of can you communicate, uh, what insights um, do you have into into various topics. Um, what's what evidence can show that you're resilient, be able to take the knocks, be able to bounce back? Uh, how good are you at dealing with uncertainty? Yeah, often for exams, you know, uh, this question will come up. I learn the answer. It comes up. Uh, uncertainty is much broader. We don't know how things might develop. How do you how do you um, adapt to changing circumstances, uh, problem solving, etc. 
again, so all these things you'll see in that outer ring there, things which we may we we can't make any assessment of through your A level results. These are looking very much at your your character, your aptitude, your cut out how you cut out for a doctor question. So these are things which you can't learn uh, as such and prepare as uh, for for the interview. Just sort of like if if they ask me this, I say this. Um, I say that, but I've done several of these interviews set over over many years, and I'm well aware that there are these uh, mock interview companies you can go to, things that I run out uh, and say, you know, these are the questions which come up. This is the answer. You can easily get caught out if your answer is not based in, ex in your own personal experience. Uh, for example, uh, one of the questions is something of the lines of, um, can you give me an example of um, where you planned to do something, you consider all the possibilities, the best course of action, and then when you put that uh, action in, into place, things went wrong. How did you deal with that? And now I forget this. Ah, yes. Uh, on my Duke of Edinburgh uh, course, I, we we did uh, we had an orientation exercise where we had to go to the Peak District and find our way from A to B. And I was the uh, person who had the map. And halfway up the hill, we came across a, a, a wall which wasn't on the map. And I realised I was holding the map upside down. Um, and so we were lost. And uh, that doesn't answer the question. Well, one thing out of 20 people I interview, about 17, 18 will tell exactly the same story. The other variation is the one who forgot to bring the sandwiches. But never mind. The point is, I don't believe 17 students who are getting uh, top A levels are holding maps upside down. Um, and that comes across very quickly. The other point is, they did. The question was more about something you planned and you considered, and it went wrong. I don't think anybody plans to hold a map upside down. So be very careful uh, when doing these mock interviews or talking to people about what the answer is. It's it's not. That's not telling us about you. It's a rote learning exercise which tells us nothing about you, and you can be caught out very quickly. So think very much of your personal experience, how, again, how do you react to different things? There might be things like um, arguments within teams. How do you resolve them, et cetera? Thinking about your role that way. So we're looking for you to look at you as a person. No right or wrong answers. It's much more giving us an idea of how you approach, how you react to these sort of things. So we're looking for your motivation, uh, broad understanding of what a career in medicine is about. So things like this talk give you will hopefully give you some things to then look ahead at. Uh, there are often questions about what's the major uh, medical issue this week. Um, so we're on ongoing things like the uh, response to the COVID inquiry. Uh, there might be some um, new medical innovation, but usually there's something if not every day, at least weekly, new in the medical field, which are you aware aware of? Things like the doctor strikes, How do you, where do you stand on that? What, what are the issues there? Uh, looking to insight, your insight into the complex, complexities of healthcare practice, practice. so a general aware of the structures. Um, I want to say practice interviews, interview skills at every opportunity. Have that looking at the question, ask whoever's asking those questions to delve into those personal qualities, not just the I held the map upside down. How silly was that of me type answers? Look at things. How do your answers reflect those kind of things we're looking for? Um, we're looking for honesty um, and self-awareness. So I spoke about this MMI format uh, where we're looking at commitment, empathy, uh, being able to take different perspectives. Um, the, the, the interviews over COVID, we had to do them over Zoom, but we're now in person looking for those uh, stations involving motivation, personal ethical challenges, critical thinking, uh, some basic calculations, how to explain a dosage to someone, uh, communication skills, interacting with, uh, with patients. OK, that's pretty much brought things to an end and end. I think I've dealt with most. Um, the first one I've talked about, the ones relating to 
uh, grades. Um, is it possible to get into medicine industry without taking A level chemistry? At Birmingham, you must have chemistry. Um, I would suggest you look at each uh, medical school. They may have different requirements. I say now at Birmingham, we want biology and chemistry. Others may not. Uh, that's very much looking at and also look at up to date information on the website rather than remembering something for last year. Things change. Do we maths to get into medicine? No, nope, not at Birmingham. Again, look at the different um, uh, requirements for the medical schools. I think I've given you a Good insight into the undergraduate years uh, for junior doctor placements, the postgraduate years, that's uh, I think a three year program, what we call foundation one, foundation two, which again is a, <coughs> you'll have uh, placements at different hospitals, different specialties, and be there the, uh, learning the sort of the jobbing doctor type thing. And by the third year of the postgraduate studies, you're looking at more specializing, so, um, taking a couple of, of the blocks in, in general practice, for example, whatever you're interested in. UCAT, again, the aptitude, I think I've shown that. Uh, one thing's kind of been doing now to strengthen my personal statement. We talked about being able to show commitment to medicine and uh, involvement in society. And again, so volunteering opportunities and don't just do them as an exercise to put on your personal, learn from them. I say one of the things you need to learn about yourself is am I comfortable talking to people from different backgrounds, different different uh, uh, age groups, et cetera. Learn from those experiences. Don't just see it as an exercise, oh, I've got to do that to, to show something on a personal statement. If I don't, if you don't uh, get exactly what grade requirements uh, are, are yet, do you have lots of work experience and good work? Is it still pos possible to get a place still? Yes, we do look at the, I think I said the things we, we look at um, does is fairly flexible. Unfortunately, the grades are the big cutoff points. Uh, so don't give up on that. And the thing, if you if you fall slightly short, like that first question is contact the medical schools you received offers from, explain your circumstances and see what see where you stand there. Um, I can't give a definitive answer on that, but basically talk to the admissions tutors who will be able to guide you any further. Are there any less common non-traditional ways of getting into medical career? Uh, we didn't cover that. Um, generally, not many. Uh, we do have, um, put, there are, we don't now at Birmingham have a, um, a graduate entry course where people might have done a degree in biochemistry and they wanted to pick up, come into medicine, but several universities still do. But I think that's very much something you need to keep an eye on with the expansion of, of medical training places. So there is talk about the University of the NHS, uh, sort of an apprenticeship model being taught directly in hospitals, et cetera. Um, that's very much an emerging picture. But I can see several other routes to medicine come, being developed over the next two or three years as we do with the increased number of training places. And at five to six, I'll shut up. Have <laughs> any follow up questions or any details you want me to, to go through? We, we haven't from in the chat at the moment, Mike, but I would encourage anybody to put those in if they have anything, any burning questions. Um, but bearing in mind the time, it's just a couple of things that um, I got kind of to ask you on behalf of students. Um, when you're looking as an admissions team at the applications and you see for obviously medical schools that they apply to and you don't see those, they just apply to you. Have you got any particular sort of ideas on um, this fifth choice approach? And it's something that I know is debated in a number of different ways, but obviously students have to put down four choices for medicine and an additional fifth choice. Have you got any advice on that? Um, I'm afraid not really. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So my understanding is from the August form now is that yes, you put four medical sc schools in there, but mm. as I don't know whether I know you've applied to Birmingham, I don't know whether the other three medical schools. So okay. I don't um, know yeah. whether there's a priority, etc. Um, I suppose in, ter in terms of the fifth choice, the non-medical choice, if you're still uh, if you know if you are, don't get to medical school, then in terms of preparing yourself, assuming after your first degree, you would you might want to take the postgraduate route. Most of the postgraduate courses, the, the graduate entry courses for into medicine, the first degree should be in something related health health related. 
yeah mm. so that could be biochemistry yeah. etc so i think if you still have that well when you're applying you have that desire to be a doctor but i think you have that that fifth choice and showing that's something which you can say is health related should you still want to be a doctor after that degree then that would uh, put you in the mix for uh, graduate entry courses thank you mike thank you yeah. it's something i know that will be probably addressed when uh, applications are in the process yeah. but i think that's something that students often ask i'll, I'll um, ask my had... colleague the admissions tutor tomorrow i'll, I'll check with thank you if, that if, would if be they, very helpful they, thank you got anything more detail on that or any more insight should i say Thank you. Um, one of the students has asked, are there any topics that you should talk about specifically in your medical personal statement, for instance? I mean, I think you have covered that, that really, in a way, it's something very individual, but something that interests you both in the course and a specific area of medicine and also then your experience that you've had. Is that correct? I think in terms of going through the thousands of applicants, we're looking mm. for something which is concise and the key things stand out. So I would say, what your volunteer role was, how does that, you know, how long you've done it for, give us a nature of what that commitment was, and also what, how you felt that related to your personal qualities in terms of actually to be a doctor. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, doing that uh, that way. Faith's been, Faith's been madly putting wonderful connections in the uh, the chat so, and links so that students can see when we send this recording out as well what right. they might be able to do to get both in help at King Ed's but also some of your own uh, links as well so yeah. that's really really helpful and um, is there anything you want to add to that Mike we're nearly up for time but you've been very comprehensive um, and, and we're delighted that you've run us through all of that is there anything else that you you feel that students should know at this stage um, just good luck to you all just Thank good you. luck to you it is a um, I gave this talk at Russell's Hall in the summer and uh, a student came up to me after and says, why do, when I go to these talks, why do the people try and put you off medicine? And I hope I haven't given that impression. I, I, I've just tried to give that impression that there's a lot to consider. It is a big commitment. And so that personal thing was, am I cut out for a doctor? Am I comfortable talking to uh, people from different generations? If not, go in out and try that. Go out now and start talking. You look at those opportunities, you know, et cetera. That gives you, will tell you a lot about yourself. Um, the, 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 the worst cases that I see are people who, uh, don't appreciate students who don't appreciate all that's involved there and they think it's just about learning about mm -hmm. I wanted to be a surgeon so it's learning the anatomy that's all I need to know and they they find that they don't they're not actually cut out for it they don't want to do medicine and yet they're committed to several years of education where they could have been getting on with life elsewhere I encourage you to be I'm not a doctor myself but I work with lots of doctors who find it a very satisfactory satisfying interesting dem but demanding career um so I'm not trying to put people off I think very much just you'll recognize the whole everything that's involved in being uh, in medicine and uh how you might thrive in that environment I think that's that's a really good summary. And actually, I mean, I think this is a really realistic one of the reasons that we we like to have this presentation at this particular time and this discussion is actually very much that the realistic situation is that it, it is a challenging process there are lots of moving parts to applying for medicine and in actual fact students who are going to be successful need to be able to cope with all of those Absolutely. but we really really want to enthuse students with the whole concept of becoming a doctor mm -hmm. but it has to be all done correctly and all of those moving parts put in place at this earlier stage so Absolutely. that's brilliant we've got lots of help and support for students here at college um, and we would we'll be picking up students who are interested in in applying for uh, medicine dentistry and veterinary in our aspire program uh, and phase put the details of that on there and that's for registering any interest if they're not already picked up after christmas um, we concentrate on early entries at this stage and after christmas so thank you very much indeed mike
Yeah, Hello. can I just interrupt? Um, I apologise. If you have a moment, so we've had a couple of last minute questions, which oh, right. I think would okay. be really useful to address if you have yeah. another moment, Mike. Yes, um, yes, no problem. There was a question from a student. We run um, an applied science, which is a level three extended certificate equivalent to an A level, but it's a BTEC extended certificate um, and um, in equivalent to one A level, sorry, not three, um, in applied science. And the question is does the university accept that as opposed to an A level in chemistry or biology? And this is something I think we've been asked before um, during open days and things. So just to get your your sort of feeling on that, really, um, Mike, if you can. I don't know. I'm not that involved with the 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 various other qualifications there. But can I ask you to email me that, and I'll pass that on to Derek Ward, the admissions tutor. And be, yeah, rather than me speculating now, I think sure. if I get it from the admissions tutor, we'll be able that to give you That would be very a, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mike. yeah. and absolutely. Thank you for that. And um, just the two other questions which are quite connected, really, is about work experience. Mm -hmm. uh, one student said, is pharm pharmacy work experience useful for an application to medicine? And, um, and what work experience is most recommended? And I think you have covered that quite a lot already, but specifically with regards to pharmacy. And I think that comes back to what um, Lou was saying with regards to um, perhaps that fifth choice as well, which some students... Yeah perhaps put put us as pharmacy as, at times which you know can be quite difficult so I it's said, just what your thoughts on that really i said the the, the most common one i see in application form is voluntary in care homes yeah. but yes working in a pharmacy uh particularly if you can uh, you have that meet and greet the customers coming in uh type role so you're talking to people it's very much how you then put that um what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, it may be if you're shadowing the pharmacist uh, who's putting together the the the, the orders, etc. Questions about um, uh, accuracy of note taking, etc. All those sort of things that you can bring into it um, is more much more of the work experience side. Is you may demonstrate interest in medicine in other ways, being aware of current events stuff, but things like, for example, uh, working Saturday jobs in a supermarket or a clothing store. I remember one student I interviewed a couple of years ago who was very who did a Saturday job in uh, Next or some clothing store and was able to relate her experience there in terms of teamwork, um, communication, accuracy of um, keeping stock notes, etc. Working in a live dynamic environment, which showed me, you know, whole, lots of qualities about uh, how she dealt with the public, uh, dealt with colleagues, um, reacted to situations when when patients, uh, patients uh, customers were complaining, etc. And that, took, you know, she was able to frame that in a way which demonstrates a lot of the qualities that we were after. So it's very much thinking about what things you might do now, what how might you demonstrate the relevance there, but also looking at sort of things which um, may challenge you in terms of talking to people. And again, particularly the idea of talking to strangers, people from uh, different backgrounds, different age groups, etc., um, is is important. So anything you can you're doing which you can relate back to those broad qualities we're looking for. That's brilliant. And actually, uh, somebody else has asked about whether or not work experience in person is more valued than online work experience. I think during COVID, there was no other way of doing things and a lot yeah. of things were developed with online experience. I'm not quite sure how that's viewed in the current climate, but some of the things that you've just talked about are not particularly possible with the online experience uh, and I, I don't know I think that there was a lot of experience that students gained online about mm. learning about medicine but I think that interactive element and the the community aspect and the kind of things the qualities you're speaking about are certainly more accessible and more obviously yeah. um, you know quantifiable through an in-person experience would you agree with that Mark? absolutely uh, and again mm. it's not just the be shown you've done that but it's also you learning about yourself of how do i mm. you know how will i react with mm. uh people from different backgrounds etc how do i strike it strike up conversations with people at bus stops mm. yeah <laughs> that's that yeah. sort of thing yeah. uh, developing yeah. co confidence in being able to you know just um have general chit chat yeah yeah because uh, it tells you a lot about yourself and you learn about people 
Absolutely, and I think it's that observation that you're looking for as well, isn't it? About yeah. about uh, not just about yourself, but observing other people and 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 the approach to that. Yeah. I want um, to say it's the approach of people at bus stops. Don't just say I want to be a medical <laughs> student. Tell me about your medical problems. No, it's that thing. Oh, what a terrible day! You know, you, you look cold. Yeah. You 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 know that's a lot of shopping. You know, so the, just general chit chat. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and in actual fact, just from the student perspective, um, certainly here in careers, we are able to support uh, you obtaining a DBS um, that you may be required for uh, being in um, a, a care home. And a number of care homes do require over 18, but there are plenty that don't and they have to be supported by DBS. So come in and see uh, Jane Edwards or myself and Faye, um, you know, here at the Careers Hub. if. Uh, you're requiring a DBS when you've approached a care home in that way. So uh, they usually have that necessity to just make sure that your back that your uh, background is checked and and officially done. So um, there are plenty of opportunities in local care homes. Um, I can see there, Mike. You've put some information up there as well. Thank you. Yeah, that's the email address for admissions for yeah these these specific questions uh, that. Um, would vary on personal 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 circumstances. Yeah. That's really helpful. Mike, thank you very much indeed. We will send, as Faye has said, the recording out. And thank you, students, for your questions. Those have been very pertinent. And for those before and um, during the session, we hope that you've got uh, a lot of information and perhaps some further questions that you want to ask. There'll be plenty of opportunities to um, you know, use uh, both the careers and Aspire teams uh, for further information. So thank you, Mike. We'll send this round thank to everybody you. and we look forward very much to seeing you again in the not too distant future. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and thank you, to, thank you very right. much indeed. And thanks, students. Take care. See you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.